Well, you guys, it's been a very strange, draining season. And it seems like it's been that way for even the people down at Bravo. Bravo Landy, you all right? Are you feeling okay? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Listen, it like I was saying, this Real Housewives of Potomac season eight, it's been a very trying season. I fell out of this early on. It, it just got to be draining. And it really was nothing. The, the Robin and Juan thing, the NECA and uh, uh, Wendy situation, just it wasn't going anywhere. That The worst thing in a reality show is a storyline that's not moving. It's just stale. So Ashley and, 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 and her husband and, and Giselle and Dog on Cat, it, it's just a bunch of stuff that just has not moved. And truly, when you sit and look at this, these people do not like each other. And I believe that. I believe that is the reality of things, that most of these girls really don't like each other. That's an issue. That's an issue. And I think Andy is up to here with the Potomac girls. Like, seriously, when he literally ushered this in, part one, this part one, this is a reunion, y'all. Part one of the reunion. I think there's three parts. But this part one, Andy ushered us in telling the ladies, so are we going to you know, are we going to try to reach some type of resolution? I've never heard him lead in. I've never heard him lead in with uh, a statement like that. Like, it's, the fake resolution is automatic. That's, that's always been. I mean, even with, like, Shows that are like love and hip hop when they get the fight to carry it on, the the resolution piece is always there. That's part of the reunion. That's what it is. That's what it gives. But anyway, that's how he led in, which made me say, "Is everybody okay? Is everybody okay? Let's do this." Because this is a high mark. This is a high mark. As long as I've been watching reality television, I've been watching reality television since it was created. I try to think back, guys, at one time when everybody at a reunion got it right. I come up with nothing. I come up with nothing. But these ladies, literally every woman in Potomac got it right. So let's talk about fashions. This is the good thing. Each one of these women got it right. Each one. Each one got it right. Ashley. Ashley, uh, you know, and, and I have some little things to say about each one, but look at them. As a cast, that is the best photo that I've ever seen on a housewife reunion show. Each one got it right. There's nobody that's just, you know, just like, oh, girl, what were you thinking? They each got it right. Everybody is on brand with who they are. Like, seriously, I loved it. I loved it. I don't ever remember delivering commentary on fashion and everybody. I I, I was like, yes, yes, yes. For everybody, let's go across here. Ashley. Ashley is giving me showgirl. You know, now, you know, it's the Ashley type of showgirl. It's for safe. You know, it's 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 showgirl, but it's Ashley, and it works. And I like this hair. I like this hair. This this hair was interesting enough. You know, it, it was cool on Ashley. It looks cheap. It looked like a cheap wig, but it looks like what it is. She's dressed up. It looks like she's playing dressed up. She looks like a Barbie doll. She does. She looks like a Barbie doll. Not Barbie, but Skipper. You know, we'll take that from Ashley. Next to her. Miss Wendy. 
Miss Wendy, Miss Wendy, Miss Wendy. Listen, I really do love the wet hair look. And the first thing I saw this, I said, I really wouldn't have liked that. I really would have liked some big hair, like a big, something big and full and obnoxious. But then when I looked at it again, I said, you know what? This is Wendy. Wendy's new focal point is her boobs and, and her body and how snatched her body is. And this whole look here really did give me vamp realness. She is giving you Akasha. It's giving, you know, queen of the damned. That that whole neck piece, gaudy, it's very gaudy and it's very in your face, but it works. It works. And that is what came to mind, Akasha um, from Queen of the Dam. That's what came to mind first. Next to her, we got Candace. Candace looks like a lounge act. This is, it, she just looks cute to me. She looks cute. And actually, when you look at the pose and everything that Candace is giving here, that bit of leg, and I like this hair because I usually am having a fit about Candace's hair and makeup. I like this. You look at Candace real good. She looks like a lounge singer or an old time uh, showgirl, you know, like a real showgirl. She's giving me Lola Falana. That because when I look at her at a glance, she looks like Lola Falana standing there. Um, when you get up on it and you see the actual fabrics and things, it's giving a little more. That's right. I'm pleased to meet you. I still want to tell you my name. So it's, it's a little nasty girl, but it works. It, it, I don't know. From a distance, that gives me Lola Falana. Up close, it gives me a little downgraded vanity. It, you know, it works. It's cool. I think Candace looks good. I really did like it. Um, next to her, we got Mia. And Mia is definitely going to the prom. She's definitely going to the prom. This is what our girls look like now when they're going to the prom. That You get that dress off of any internet designer, any of these Instagram designer girls or YouTube designer girls and take your butt right on to the prom. Um, yeah, and that's not a read. That's not a dig. That's just what it gives. This is what I, what the black girls look like when they're going to the prom now. And it's cool. It works. I'm fine with it. Um, very Mia on brand with Mia. You know, she's a little bit much, but not not just not just enough. Next to her is the goddamn goat. Is the goddamn goat. That damn Karen is standing out like a sore thumb, and she literally has stepped into her power and her. See, Karen gets it right more times than not. But this look right here, she stepped into her power. She looks like just what she is, the goddamn grand dame of Potomac. That whole look, that short wig is so bad on Karen. And everything, I love it. She was definitely my best dressed of the ladies. She's still on trend with what it is they were doing, but just different enough to stand out. And then she's of a certain age and she's killing it. Karen was definitely my best dress. Definitely the goat. Definitely the grand dame. I'm here for it. Giselle looks better than she has ever, ever looked. Hair, makeup, dress, fit, everything. Everything is fabulous because last year was a big old fail. But this one, fabulous. You look great, Giselle. Now, it's mother of the bride. But for you, this is leaps and bounds on your brand. You look fantastic, Miss Giselle. You really do. Robin is giving me full on drag queen. Robin, you never know what to expect from Robin. Robin can turn a look. Period. Um, it, it's it's my least favorite of the looks, but Robin's okay because she Robin gives me her whole persona is uh love and basketball. She's you know the, the the she's Juan's guy friend that just happens to have a vagina, you know what I mean? So she gives me that that best friend vibe. So you know, for her to have 
the gown that has the pants with the boots made into it and all of that is very quirky and it has a real masculine side to it and it's overdone and it's overly dramatic in some space, very much drag queen. And it just works for Robin. It is my least favorite of this, but when you think about her personality and sometimes what she can, cause see, she can glam out now. Cause Robin definitely can dress up and be glammed out. This was just had a like hard edge to it that gave me drag queen and it worked for Robin. I'm I'm here for it. And NECA, she's new. NECA is giving you black girl at a pageant. She is giving very much Miss Somebody's HBCU pageant queen. And it's cool. It's cool. Um, she looks good. These ladies did, they outdid themselves. They outdid themselves. This is the first time that I've ever gone from one end of the stage to the other end of the stage and not one wrong move. I think they all hit it dead out of the park. Very proud of you all. And after the season that you've had, you needed something because the show has been pure trash. But baby, at y'all reunion, aesthetically, y'all are everything on the eyes. So kudos. Kudos to you and Potomac. First time ever I've ever seen that that I can remember. I can't remember ever delivering that type of commentary. Of course, I got something smart to say because that's just me. But you girls did it. Y'all look really, really good. They're in New York City. So, hey, have at it. Karen is in seat one. She is in seat one and Giselle, instead of being on the other side, because it's usually Giselle to the front, to the right, and Karen to the left or vice versa. But Giselle, you behind her. What is that about? So that caught my eye. I said, oh, did you fall from grace a little taste? Asking for a friend. Because your storyline is dry. Very dry. Very dry. You really ain't had nothing to talk about, really. Andy, um, like he, he even said, it was hard to watch this season. Um, he asked him about ownership and moving on. And I just was like, whoa. So he feels like I felt. But see, he got to go to work with y'all. I turned the television off. I literally turned the television off and came back when it pepped up. Just ridiculous. And I shouldn't have to do that because I've been with y'all since y'all been on the air. Robin versus everyone. Child Robin and Candace. Y'all not friends. Y'all my friends, it just is what it is. She was really pissed off about the stuff. And there's something with, with some bloggers that Robin is supposedly friends with and is using them to say bad things about Candace and maligning Chris. And that just was a whole big mess. And she said that it basically was to divert away from the thing with Juan. Um, how much of that do I believe? A bunch of it. A bunch of it. But Candace, how mad can you get? Because you are Real Housewives maven of social media. You are to Twitter what Dr. Heavenly is to Instagram and YouTube for Marriage to Madison. You are a thorn in their side when it comes to that stuff. So try they got to get you where they can get you. Now, Giselle and um Giselle and doggone Candace. That thing is a mess. That I don't think is able to be repaired. It's just messed up. But Giselle was on one. Giselle looked good. She knew she looked good and she was in her bitch bag. She really was. When she was like, oh girl, here we go. Tears, tears, tears. I said, oh, okay. Honey. And I, that was just a whole mess. It, it, child. They were not giving Candace a bit of wiggle room at all. Um, and when Robin told her, girl, I don't want to be your friend, honey. I don't want anything from you. I don't need no apology from you. I don't need nothing from you, girl. I don't want to be your friend. So, well, then don't be my friend then. I'm like, okay, well, you struck out with that whole thing, Andy. Then when you go through the whole thing with Candace and Giselle, same thing, Giselle picking tears, tears, tears. And then she says, oh, and she said something called her a bitch. She said, oh, it's name calling time. Like literally, Giselle was so above it and so in her bitch bag. She was like, girl, I'm not going to show you any emotion. 
I'm not going to get down there with you. I'm going to let you make a fool out of yourself because you all emotional and you carrying on. And the thing is that I really don't care. I'm like, wow. So then they went into this whole thing about the verbiage that was being used and how damaging the verbiage was when it comes to the Chris thing and Giselle. And yes, they pointed out some of that verbiage that Giselle used to really push forth like Chris had been inappropriate with her. And she apologized for some of it and walked some of it back. And Candace still was just like, you know, well, girl, that's fine. But I'm not going to take responsibility for the death threats that you got because, you know, we all get them. I'm like, no, Candace, that's shady. Because yes, y'all all get death threats. Yes, y'all all get trolled and everything like that. But that stuff was directly involved with that whole thing about the, you know, the putting that jacket on Chris kind of thing. So if she got to eat up what she said, you kind of could eat up some of what you created because you did. You were down on social media and you created that drama. But whatever. Y'all played nasty games with each other. And I think that's why I don't think y'all could go back. Y'all went too far. Y'all too far out in the water. Y'all can't go back. Um, Mia, I wouldn't be friends with Mia for nothing in the world. Mia has shown us here that there is nothing that she won't break. She's perfect for, for a reality show because there's no one in her life that she holds dear or nothing in her life that she holds dear to the point where she won't put it on camera. Okay. Last year, it was Jacqueline, honey. And they asked her about Jacqueline and she, oh, yeah, child, we better now. So all that turmoil was really about what? Because remember, we got one of Jacqueline's sisters that float down here around in the YouTube streets. And no matter what game Jacqueline and Miss Mia might have been playing on screen, family members wasn't playing that same game. The sister was pissed. So, and that was real. Now, that, that's where the camera should have been because Jacqueline's sister was pissed and was ready to put some hands on Mia. So I'm like, girl, and then here we go. This season, you would have flipped over with the whole thing about the um, the situation with you and Jacqueline. That's gone. Now it's you and Gordon, and this divorce and, and, and all of this. And th there's a lot of this stuff that probably shouldn't even be shared. You know, y'all got paperwork's running. Now there's a, another boyfriend. And then, you know, them two is so weird and so out there with their sex life that at first it seemed weird to me how like she was, when they were on the break, she's all on the phone with the boyfriend on FaceTime and he waving at Gordon. And the more we go into it, we figure out that she basically always had him. He had never went nowhere. They just kind of like split up. And then she had actually dipped back in and has cheated on him with, with, uh, he cheated on Gordon with this guy. And now her and the guy are together. His name is Ink. They are actually together. He's from her past. Um, and it's gone so far as when well, she dropped out of there and said that the baby, the oldest baby, Jeremiah may actually be Inks. Ink believes that Jeremiah is his, and he's kicking up some dust about that. And I'm looking at Gordon like, you just sold your whole soul to Real Housewives of Potomac. But little do you know, Real Housewives of anything ain't about the husbands. You're like a bracelet. You're like a belt. You're like a purse. You're interchangeable. If you don't come back, nobody cares. Mia coming back is the important thing. She is the star of the show. You are her accessory. So to put yourself out there in this manner, G, you look foolish. You look foolish. You look crazy. You're on here with your wife and her boyfriend and y'all chucking it up and, hey, how you doing? And she been messing around with him since y'all been married. And now he's coming for one of the kids and you look crazy. You look crazy. Ain't nobody that calm. You just look crazy. Or it's that same stuff that when y'all first introduced us to y'all was kind of like freaky and she kind of had passes and stuff. Like, where you do you work the light switch for them? And then, you know, she with the bullshit when she said, oh, yeah, you know, I never let our kids see mommy and daddy argue. But there was a whole comment about one of the kids said that you were sleeping in the bed with Mr. So-and-so. I said, 
So they ain't allowed to see you argue, but they allowed to see you lay up with your man. What? See, y'all do too much. Y'all do too much. And Gordon, you look crazy, Gordon. You too old for that. You look crazy. Um, last thing I'm gonna talk about Karen and Robin. That just throw it in the garbage. Just throw the whole situation in the garbage. Um, when they were trying to do some some patching up with them, Robin kind of stepped out there and you know said, "I do take responsibility for some of the things that I did, and some of the things that I said, and I can say three nice things about you." Child Karen went to go supposedly say some nice things about Robin. Child, she threw some shade at her and then they got to arguing. I said, Karen. There is no Karen and no Robin. They just don't get along. That's where the problem is with this. It's too real. These ladies really do have volatile so-called friendships. They don't really like each other like that. And it's coming through and it is showing. It is showing. I'm going to end this right here because that's really all that we actually had for the first part of this. It wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. It's been much better than the whole show. That's for sure. So we'll see what next week brings. But um, yeah, Potomac, pretty rough season. Pretty rough season. But y'all got the fashions down, baby. You said y'all might not have performed good, but you damn sure look good. See y'all next week.